Hey guys, welcome back. It is day seven, and the first thing we're going to do is open NetBeans. And today we're going to be talking about arrays. What is an array? Well, it's a container object that holds a fixed number of values that have a single data type. What does that mean? Well, it's basically like a thing that has many slots that you can put stuff in. So say you have a row of slots, say three slots. You have slot A, slot B, slot C. If you put an int in slot A, then you have to put an int in slot B and C as well. If you put a string in slot A, B and C also have to be strings inside of their slot. The whole thing together, A, B, and C together, is called an array. Also, it is important to note that when you create this type of data structure, this type of thing that can hold other things because it has certain slots, the length of it is fixed. So if you start off with your array at length 3, where there's three objects in it, there's slots 0, 1, and 2, well, that's the length of it. It's never going to change unless you completely create a whole new object and reset the pointer to there. I know it sounds kind of abstract, so we are just gonna program things and hopefully it will work. And so we are gonna create a new project for our arrays and we're gonna go next here. And then we're gonna do array practice. And this will hold just kind of all of our array practice. I'll put it in my desktop. We'll hit finish. It's gonna load up. And this video is gonna be a little bit different than my other videos because instead of creating like a big object like our car or a big game, we are just gonna create a bunch of things in our main. This usually isn't how you program, but I'm just trying to show you how arrays, this reference data structure works. So with that in mind, we are gonna do everything inside of our main function here. It'll be static, we're just gonna write some things and we'll know what's going on. So like I said, we are creating arrays. And what is an array? Well, it's like you have this thing with square brackets and you have like a zero, a five, a three, a two, a one. You have some things in these slots and these slots are each indexed by a zero, a one, a two, a three, a four. So this is our array. At slot zero, there's a zero. At slot one, there's a five. At slot two, there's a three. At slot three, there's a two and slot four, there's a one. This array is of length five because there are five individual slots, but notice every index is between zero and four inclusive. So you're never gonna have something that's at index five for an array that's length five. The largest index is only gonna be the length minus one, which here would be four. Another example of an array would be if we have these same indexes here, would be something with strings. And so if we created something like Bob, comma, Sally, comma, I don't know, max. And then we close it, and so we'll only have three things in here, and I'll space these out so they're above their appropriate slot. Here we have a string array that's of length three. And so again, the largest index is one minus three because we're starting our counting from zero. And notice also that everything in here is a string. Everything inside the array is of the same data type. And of course, this length cannot be changed once set. There's no addition to this array. You can only interchange certain things. So if I wanted to say Bobby in here instead of Sally, I could do that, but I'm never going to add another index to our array unless we create a whole new array object. So let's write some code. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is initializing arrays. And there are three different ways you can initialize or declare your arrays. And the first way is you do the data type first. So whatever is gonna be inside your array, are they gonna be ints like in our first array here or in our second array down here where it's strings. So we'll have int and then open close square brackets. Then we'll do a space and then the variable name per usual, int array one. Then we'll do a semicolon. Like everything else, we're just declaring the fact there's an int array one. We can initialize it later, but there is one right there. So the next way you can actually initialize an array is you can do int open close square brackets, and then we'll do int array two. We'll say equals, and we'll say, we want this array to be length four. So we'll do new int four. And inside here is basically the size of the array. Before I forget, let's put index up here, and then we'll put array here. So we know what's going on with all of this. And we'll add it here so we can remember what is our array, what is the index, what does it all mean? Up there, and now it's all fixed. So anyways, back to what I was saying, here's the next way that you can make space for your in array too. 
And then here's the final way you can do it. You can do int open close square brackets. We'll do int array three. And you can actually say what you want to be in this int array. We'll do five, two, nine, I don't know, one, and then three, something like that. So these are the ints in your int array. Now if I put like a string here, it's gonna error because they're not all of the same data type. If I change this whole thing to strings, it's still gonna error because it's not an int. But if I change this to string, all is good. But again, I would wanna change my variable name to match that because it doesn't look like an int array three right now. So we will command Z all of that to go back to where we were. And we'll do one more string, open close square brackets array. We'll do string array and we'll say one equals, and then we'll put our shopping list here. So we'll just say bananas, apples, pears. And then we'll close this curly bracket, do a semicolon. And instead of calling the string array one, we'll call it shopping list. And up here, I'm gonna write another comment and say initializing, and we'll add declaring allocating and initializing. And that's what we're doing here in these lines. We are declaring the fact there's gonna be a variable or allocating space in the second line here. And then we're initializing what those values are gonna be. Now let's say we actually wanna initialize our int array too. If I print it out right now, it's gonna be all zeros. And so we'll go ahead and do that by saying arrays.toString, open parenthesis, and we'll put in our array int array2. This is a class method right here because arrays is here and we need to import something because you always do. And then we will actually print the string out to the console so we can see in fact there are only zeros. We'll hit play. It's going to run. And notice there are four zeros because four is the size of the array. Let's go ahead and print out our int array3. And we'll see, in fact, that our int array three here is initialized. So we'll go int array three, semicolon, we'll press play. And there they are, the same values in the same order, very important because they're accessed by index. It's not just a set, it's a very ordered array where order does matter. So back to what I was saying, initializing variables. Here we're gonna add a comment and say print out arrays so we remember how to do that. So now back to really what I was saying, if we want to initialize the second array here, we can access each index and set each index to a certain number. What do I mean by that? Well, we'll do int array 2, which is the name of the variable. Then we'll choose an index. We know it's going to be length 4, so we have index 0, 1, 2, and 3 to choose from because counting starts at 0. So we'll say index 0. Then we'll say equals and we'll put in, because it's an int array, we'll put in, I don't know, 10 semicolon. We just set index zero. So here's our index zero to 10. And we can actually copy this and put it here and then scroll down here. So we'll say our first number is 10 here. Then we'll do int array two. We'll do one. So we're setting the first index to be, I don't know, eight eight there, and we'll add a little space so it's all lined up, very important. Then we'll do int array two, again, the name of the variable, then two equals five, change this up here to five, then do int array two, and then say three equals 10, because you can't have duplicates inside of your array and then we will change this to 10. And our length is no longer five, it's four, so we'll change that, and then we'll take away this other index here. So there we go. And keeping in mind, initially, all four of these indices were zero, as depicted down here. Notice we only had to call a simple function to make our arrays to a string, but we can actually create a custom function that will do this for us. So if we go up here, we can create a function here and we can go public statics. We don't have to create an instance of this array practice because it's kind of like we're just messing around in main. Then we'll do void and we'll call it print array and we'll have it accept an array. So we'll do int open close square bracket and then we'll say array will be the parameter name. Then we'll open close curly brackets 
and we can actually customly print whatever array is entered as an argument here into the console instead of relying on Java to have its array method down there. So what would be the first thing we need to do? Well, first we need to print out this little figure here. It's not going to automatically come up for us. So we'll do system.out.print and we'll do print so it's on the same line here rather than printing a character and then skipping to the next line. So we'll do print and then we'll do that character. Semicolon. And then we're going to do a for loop. So if you remember from a couple videos ago, we do for int i equals zero. We're initializing this variable i that's going to be used locally here in our for loop. Then we'll do i is less than array dot length. That's the length of the array. You access it here with the dot. That's usually how you access properties or use methods as long as what you're doing the dot on is not the argument to a method. <laughs> And then we'll do a semicolon, I++, because we'll increment it up every one. Then we'll do curly brackets. Next, we want to print out every single thing that's inside of our array. So we can do this by accessing each element. How do we access an element? Well, we do int item, because this will be the item we're pulling out, equals array at the index. This may seem a little weird, but follow along with me. Basically what it means is we're going to get our array, we're going to take whatever is at index i, and we're going to put it into item. So here, if our index here i is 3, for this array right here, we would get 2, 2 would be the item. Again, we're retrieving items from our array by using the index. And because this goes from 0 all the way to array.length minus 1, we'll get every single item that is in the array. So what do we want to do with this item? Well, we want to print it to the console, so we'll do system.out.println, then we'll do item, it'll print it out, and we want to do just print because we want it to be on the same line. Then we're going to say if i is less than array.length minus 1, then we want to add a comma here because we're not at the end. Notice there's a comma here, 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 but for the last one we don't put a comma. So if our index is still not at the end, then we also want to print out a comma in a space. So it looks pretty. So we'll do system.out.print, and then we'll do a comma space, then have a semicolon. Then once we are done printing everything, we'll do system.out.println, and we'll print this closing square bracket right here. So it looks nice and pretty. Then we'll do a semicolon. And let's go through this. So first we print out the square bracket, then we go this for loop, so first our i is at 0, 0 is less than, and we'll use this example right here, 0 is less than 5, so we'll get the item at 0, which is 0, we'll print out 0, then we'll do the comma because we're not at the end, then we'll go to this end bracket, we'll go back up, i will be 1, so we'll print out 5, do the comma thing, then we'll go up again, i will be 2, the item will be 3, and then we'll print that out, we'll print the comma, go through it again, our index will be 3, then 3 is still less than 5, so we'll print out whatever's at that index, 2. So we'll go back up again, our index will be 4 after it's incremented, that's still less than 5, so then we will get our item there, which is 1. And since 4 equals array.length minus 1, which is 4, 4 is not less than 4, we will not print out this thing, and we will just end the loop because when we increment i again, it'll be 5 is less than 5, and that's not true, so we'll go down here and print out this closing square bracket. That's a lot of stuff, so let's go down here and actually use it, make sure it works. We'll add another printout of our int array 3 and 2, so we will do print array, we'll put int array 2, and they should print out very similar things that our array 2 string thing did originally. So we'll do print array int array 3, we will play, and notice they're the exact same things. Perfect, so we just created something Java already had for us. Well, at least now we know what's going on behind the scenes. So we'll go down here and say custom print out arrays because we're fancy, and we'll add an S there. And we'll add another line by doing system.out.println. And like I said before, if we change something that's at a certain index, it's destructive. That thing that you had there before is gone. There are no pointers to it. Nothing is there anymore. Notice how I printed out the int array 2 after messing with it and initializing its properties. The initial properties that were given to it, the 0, 0, 0, 0, those are gone. You can no longer access those. This is really important because when you set something, you want to make sure it's the right thing to set it to and that you don't need the data that's inside the array initially. 
So we can actually prove their zeros again by doing and using our custom array. We did this before, but it'll be nice to just have it here. We'll do print array, int array two. And then we'll do a little semicolon here. Then we'll play. Again, we have zeros here. And in the next line, it's technically the same array, meaning it's technically the same int array two object, but the pointer is at something different. Pointers are very crucial in Java. Here, if we scroll up, Basically, an array is a reference data structure, meaning it's an address. Because these are primitive data types, 0, 5, 3, 2, and 1 will just be there. But for our strings, which are reference data types, like we talked about on the first day, there's going to be an address here really going to Bob, there's going to be an address here going to Bobby, and an address going to Max. They won't be physically inside the array. There will be pointers inside the array to these objects. So when you change something destructively here, say changing Sally to Bobby, the thing that's inside slot one here was a previous address and now just gets changed to another address. Also, something super important to remember about pointers is that if you try to access something outside of the array, meaning if you have an array of length five and you try to access the fifth index or the negative one index, you're gonna get a null pointer, which is a very common problem in computer science, a very common problem in Java, is when you're trying to access something that's not really there, it's an important thing to watch out for and make sure that your indexes stay between zero and then the length minus one, or zero to four if the length is five, etc. So if we scroll down here, like I was saying before, you can also retrieve objects. We did this in our custom print array function. So we'll say retrieve objects. And there's mainly the one way to do this, and I'm just gonna system.out.println in this. And you just do the name of the array, which is int array two here, we'll say, and then the index of whatever object you want. So say I want the object at index three, that's what I would do. And then don't forget the semicolon here. So that's retrieving objects, the name of the array that you want, and then the index of the object that you want. There are also a bunch of functions that come with our arrays. Here that we imported, we have the two string, but there's a bunch of others. So we'll say slash slash given functions. We could do arrays dot, and then I know there's a sort, open parentheses, and then we could put our array that we wanna sort. And so we could say int array three. And because this function does not return anything, it's gonna be destructive, meaning int arrays three's values will be flipped and switched around and you won't be able to access the initial values of int array. However, here they're only sorted, so they're gonna be at a bunch of different indices, but whatever was at index zero or index one initially may not be at that index after. Of course, it could be if they're all the same number, then none of the objects at any of the indices are gonna change, but it really depends on the sorting algorithm. If that would happen, so you should just count on the fact if you use dot sort, your array's objects may not be at their corresponding indices afterward. This does say something super important about programming. It's that when a function doesn't return something and it does something like sort or it does something destructive methods that change things but they don't return things, they're probably destructive, meaning that you won't be able to access the initial value of what it was before. And we'll actually print out this array by doing print array and then calling int array three and notice it will be something different than our first int array three. So we'll play it. We got a bunch of stuff going on. We have our zeros, those all work. What have we updated? Well, we had this retrieving objects. So what was that indice three? At indice three was 10 here because this is int array two. So this would be this top one right here. We had index zero, 10 was there. We have index one, eight is there. We have index two, five is there. We have index three and 10 is there. So 10 is printed out right here. And we'll add a system.out.println to you know, clean things up. And then we'll add it again down here. So we have a nice pretty console. And if we go down here to our arrays.sort, our int array three that we printed initially is here. We had the five first, then the two, then the nine, one, three, and it was successfully sorted down here. And I used the same line of code right here that I used initially, but because I had this array sort thing do destructive programming and change the initial array three and not make an extra copy that I could use later, the same line of code printed something different. Also, if we go up here, notice how I do an int open close square bracket. Now, if I try to call this function with a string array, it's not gonna work because a string is obviously not an int. 
And the whole thing boils down to the fact I take out an int here. And if I put object here, well, that's not gonna work because int isn't an object. It is a primitive data type. The way you deal with this is with interfaces. And interfaces basically say, okay, here's a list of methods that anything that implements this interface must have. So if there's this thing called the car interface and it has this method called drive, then if say Honda implements this car interface, Honda then has to have this method drive. We'll talk about it later, but something to think about the fact that they're very similar objects, but I can't do it here. I couldn't put in a string here. I would have to create an entire method. I'd have to copy this, paste it. This is so much work. Why are we doing this? And then change this to string, then change this to string, even though it's basically the exact same code. And this is bad in computer science. You do not want two methods here that are the same thing. But notice it will still work if I do now, we'll say print string array. We'll do print array. And then inside of these parentheses, we will put whatever I called this shopping list. Shopping list. We'll save. We'll go down here. And there is my bananas, apples, and pears in the same order per usual. Still works. You just had to change some things for the compiler. So annoying. We'll deal with it when we get to interfaces. The last thing I'm going to talk about today is a special for loop that we can use for these arrays or these container objects. We're going to do it down here and we're going to call it special for loop. And this for loop is called a for each loop, but this isn't the syntax you use. In a for each loop, basically you say for, and we'll use it for our shopping list here. We'll do string s and then colon shopping list. And we'll say open close curly bracket and we'll say system.out.println and we'll say s. Semicolon, we'll add a special system.out.println up here that says special for loop. We'll do a semicolon. And basically what's going to happen here is that you have four each string inside shopping lists printed out. And you don't even have to use s. You could just have something of code that prints out, I don't know, hi. So you could do system.println hi. You could have that as well. And so we will print that out. And it prints hi three times because there are three items inside of our shopping list. So basically you don't have to use the iterator that's given. So up here in our for loop, we also don't have to use i. That's something I forgot to mention in the for video. So that's why I'm mentioning it here. But back to what we were saying. So we have this for loop for each string inside the shopping list, we are gonna print it out. So if we do play now, we'll get bananas, apples, and pears. And there we go. And they're in their specific order that they were originally. That's not always guaranteed for a for each loop in other languages, but it just so happened here. So don't count on it. If you wanna access each element in a certain order, I would recommend you use the other for loop, which had the specific index right here. Two last things I wanna talk about. One is the fact we do dot here. When you have an object that is referenced and you do dot, you're gonna get a bunch of methods, properties, things that go with that object. And so if I do int array dot, here are all the things. If they're properties, they'll be in green here or some other, I don't know, color that's special, signifying them. And then down here, everything that is in black are methods that you can use on this instance that will change things about this instance. These are instance methods. That's super helpful to know when you don't know what to do with your array. You can just do dot, that thing, and then whatever's here. Also, if you know your thing is an array, hint, hint, if you know it's part of a certain class, if you type out that class name, so we'll say arrays dot, you get all these methods you can do things with and you can look through them, do cool things with them, or you can just do array dot and again, get a bunch of things. And this is another way, array dot get to get whatever you need from an object, meaning if you do down here in retrieve, if you do array.get and then say int array2, you can do index2, that will also work, and you can actually print it out to the console right there. There we go, and we'll do closing paren there, and we'll make this index be the same so we know it's the same. We will play. And notice they're both 10. So the last thing I was going to talk about is the relationship between mod and the index in an array. 
if we scroll over here and we have, say, a random number mod 5, notice the relationship between this. So say we add all of this annoying stuff, we do math.abs, ran.nextint, all the syntax, blah, there we go. Now, whatever I get as my random number, I'll mod it by five, and it's gonna be either zero, one, two, three, or four. Notice that'll be in the index in the array. So if you wanna create a method that's like, okay, pull out a random object from my array, this would be a hint on how to do it. So I'll do random objects from array up here, and then we will make this the length. And notice you don't need to do length minus one here because this includes zero, and it doesn't go all the way up to length. Kind of makes sense? Well, mess around with this, and you can kind of see the way that mod is integrated a little bit with index and how they're kind of similar, and they can be used together, stuff like that. So in this video, we learned about arrays. We learned how to index them, what the indexes and the slots all mean together. We learned how to declare, allocate space, and initialize an array, the three different ways you can do it. We learned that you can have like an int array or a string array, but you can't have mixing data types in the same array object. The length when you create an array is permanent. You can't change an array that's length four to length five. It's gonna stay that length forever. We learned how to replace certain things inside of our array by using indexes. And we know that once we replace something that's inside of an index, there's no getting it back. This is destructive programming. There are no copies unless you make a copy yourself beforehand. We learned how to print out arrays. We learned how to custom print out our arrays. We made a custom function that did it for us. So we did not need to rely on Java's imports. We learned how to retrieve objects. We learned how to use the given functions that the arrays class gives us inside of Java. We also reviewed what a for loop is. The for loop is where you have this variable and if this certain condition is true, then we'll do this block of code, then we'll increment this variable, and then if the condition's still true, we'll keep doing the thing of code, otherwise we'll exit the for loop. And we learned about a new type of for loop called a for each loop, and that basically said for each item inside of my array, do this thing, and we didn't need to worry about the index or anything like that. And so that's it for this video. The Hacker Rank Challenge is down below in the description, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on this video. I hope you learned something, and I will see you tomorrow.